Sunny. rally in right. Washington. Right, Ted Gunderson, a famous, uh, well-known FBI, retired FBI, was denouncing the Oklahoma City bombing like Timothy McVeigh's right. other mind-controlled rat. He was a soldier's right. soldier, it was reported, and he was trained. What year was this? Oh, uh, well, this was three years ago when I met Kathy. Okay. And I looked at her videotapes about three times in a row, an hour-long lecture, and I just, my mouth dropped. I was in shock. Now, you believed her, right? No, I couldn't believe her. In fact, I had to, but I don't know, something about it rang the truth. It rang like a bell, but I just couldn't believe it. So I gave it to my, a couple of my friends, and they all came back to me and said, ah, poo-poo, forget it. She's just making money. It's lunatic now, stuff, now just leftist to, stuff. Just, just to catch up with the audience, what's unbelievable is that people like Kathy are taken from a young age and actually conditioned over time to perform services which uh, if they had their own choice they wouldn't do like a prostitute without mind control can decide whether this is what she wants to do or not yeah so well, the well, idea of mind control you're not you're not allowed to think you just have to robotically follow orders and this is exactly what the CIA enjoys they like to hire Mormons incidentally and people that are very uh, obedient and straight laced so that you know soldiers are trained and drilled in the art of war and Kathy was a pedophile and sold into sexual slavery as a young girl. Yeah, my understanding is they made a deal with her father that they wouldn't prosecute him if he agreed right. to put his daughter and other children into this program. Right, on a sixth grade education, he got very rich with military contracts and uh, selling his kids into sexual slavery. Uh, I think uh, maybe Chumpanay Ramsey was also another uh, little girl that was sold into the slavery business because she died on Christmas Eve. And they, they have like a bit of devil worship. It's already a congressional record that there's a lot of Satanist cults and things that they've investigated just to study the mind. And they've been studying the mind since the Inquisition. I mean, the torture and the, and the techniques that the Nazis have employed. So to find assassins to kill on command and to get sexual sa favors. I mean, a party girl like Kathy O'Brien just to ferry around. She had a multiple personality disorder. And so she was able to, you know, compartmentalize her different personalities and just shift around and bring in the drugs through Arkansas where when Bill Clinton was governor and um, you know do sexual favors to heads of state and so um, the testimony is really shocking so as I say I, I had to I, when I met her at the Washington DC then I got to see how friendly and nice she was and really cool and then I went on to her not then later at no time went to her house in Atlanta in Tennessee I think Forget this about two years ago. We had dinner, and I was looking for evidence. I'm going to break the story, you know. And uh, she has mountains of evidence and everything, but um, the no, no, one, the, the press doesn't want to touch this. And her stuff was thrown out of court on grounds of national security. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's, you know, she was just a sexual favor and a drug right, career. Right. Now we're we're going to be taking call-ins in the show, and we're going to be asking people if they think that that this is true or not or what their opinion is but again I want to recap a little bit about why I got interested I was at uh, a school the Ramtha School of Enlightenment in Yelm Washington and I was studying how to use more and more potential more more consciousness uh, to to make life more profound and, and while I was at the school for two weeks, a presentation was made by Kathy O'Brien. And in this presentation, uh, Kathy was asking that people feel not disempowered, but rather empowered as citizens, and that the citizens can, uh, can take steps to make things happen. And she wanted the American Psychiatric Association to be obliged by Congress to release records, and these records would help her daughter overcome her programming because her daughter was programmed in a more sophisticated way. Like you say, the studies that have been continuing are studies that show how to do the mind control in a more and more sophisticated way. Now, I think everybody realizes to some degree we're all influenced by the society in which we live. The advertisements encourage us to buy products that perhaps we don't really need. Television shows us uh, shows that maybe, you know, we're like too too tired to do anything really active, but we're not quite tired enough to sleep, and that's <laughs> sort of an, a nice little in between place for uh, commercial advertisers to come in and influence the things that we think might make us happier. Oh well, absolutely. So, mind control is definitely part of the program. Reagan but, is on record in, in California yeah. of advocating mind control in, in the prisons. Right. And but, uh, the media, but, just look at the conventions. You know, there's 10,000 protesters outside the convention hall with all kinds of issues, and we never see that on primetime TV, only on public access TV. Nevertheless, 
Transformation of America, Kathy O'Brien's book has sold 14 million copies. Oh, good. Home. Yeah, well, so, it's, so my understanding, it's the best-selling privately published book. So that means the information's out. Now, a lot of times people say, well, you're into conspiracy theories or you're paranoid or you're feeling uh, uh, disempowered. No, it's not the feel... documentation no, of no, letterheads and no, proof no, and evidence. No, but, but my feeling is instead of getting upset that all these bad things are happening, let's look on the other side. Many people must have helped Kathy to get this message out. Well, the and truth and, and will fail, the lies will fail. And eventually, yeah, yeah. But I feel that the same mechanics of mind control can be flipped the other way, that we are on the verge of understanding huge potentials that lay dormant within us that, that, that we can start to unfold. And with a stronger, more focused uh, awareness, we can bring changes in our life that are good and we can be individuals that can help others. Oh, absolutely. So, I believe that uh, when as they say in the Course of Miracles, if a miracle is not happening, something's wrong. Because in God's realm, miracles are very normal and, and reality, and we're like the fingers well, in the hands well, of well, God. As we get more towards God's realm or, or divinity, uh, we should be able to have expressions of more miracles, and, and there are more. So I believe there's a call happening right now. Caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What, what's your opinion? Do you believe that there's uh, sex slavery in the White House? I don't know. I've seen a lot of sex slavery, like uh, here in New York, but uh, I didn't know it was going on in the White House. What, what have you seen here in New York? I mean, some of the bondage clubs, there's like crazy things going on. I mean, like, I was in one and they had a guy in the closet. It was just silly. I, I understand what you're saying, caller, but you know, some people choose to do this. It, 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 they find it stimulating and exciting, and we're not really talking about that. Do you think any of, any of the people, though, are doing something against their will? That's the part that yeah. we're concerned about. Oh, yes, I totally do. I think, I mean, even in the White House, I mean, I don't think that little intern wanted to do anything. Okay, because see, now, now here's, here's the interesting part. Just like I say I'm with the whole tooth and that dentistry is holistic. If, if you've got a rotten tooth, sometimes it means that there's something off. I have and, a rotten tooth right now. Right? Okay, <laughs> well that's, I mean, I'm very interested in dentistry, believe me, but I believe this is an important topic and that's why I'm deviating on it. But, uh, but what I want you to consider is you may enjoy these, uh, these sexual activities, but you're doing it out of free choice. My concern is people who can't, because what Kathy O'Brien witnessed and what it says in her books is that there's actually a scheme to bring a different kind of education to the population at large. And this education means that people learn more and they analyze less. They absorb, they have the ability to absorb a lot of information, but their critical ability to, to, to judge and discriminate becomes less. So that Kathy and many sex slaves have a photographic memory. Now we think the photographic memory is something astonishingly good. Yes. Well, education well, thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, Thank you for calling. Let's, let, let's, what do you think of what, about what he said? He said in the sex clubs that he's seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot a whole, of outrageous That's a whole moral behavior. decadence that's going on. Now, George Bush is, says he wants to bring de dignity back to the White House, and then who does he have? The WrestleMania. Yeah. And what kind of dignity is that? That's right. absurd. And, uh, and it's just a big yeah. ruse and this nonsense that our whole... Uh, right. mo moral compass has just spiraled down. Right. That's part of the mind control thing that's happening en masse, well, that, that, that uh, America's dummied down into yeah. a, a stupor that they don't even realize right. these violent video sure, games sure. and sure. just nonsense on TV. I think we have another caller, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a roll-in of Kathy talking about whether mind control really brings peace of mind, because it seems uh, <laughs> Ronald Reagan, she overheard him saying once that he believed the way to world peace was to control everybody's mind. Yeah. And she felt her experience is that it's not a peaceful way to be. So well, if we had a whole bunch of people under mind control, that wouldn't be good. But for now, caller, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, what do you think about this topic, about whether we have sex slavery in the White House? Um, I don't know how comfortable I am with the word slavery. Okay. Um, I have a question. Where the people who are 
allegedly um, enslaved. Now, where are they coming from? What, what are their age ranges? Okay, they're they pedophile. They're brought into sexual slavery from a very young age. As Kathy herself has said, she had a penis in her mouth before her mother's breast, and that's all she knew. And incidentally, it was Gerald Ford who did it. And Gerald Ford was part of the mafia pornography ring that uh, he was unelected president, brought in by Nixon, and then he uh, had Dick Cheney as his guy. Right, and, but my uh, question more is, how are they affiliated with, like how was her mother or who, whomever in charge of her affiliated with the White House? No, who, who's the mother? Kathy's mother? Yes, or whoever these people are. Oh, no, what, what happened, it's really simple, is uh, of, 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 a person abuses their child, and because there's laws against it, they are up for criminal activity. They could go to court and they can serve years in prison. But some powerful people in the government have the ability to, uh, to circumvent that, to say, we will not bring you to, to justice if you agree to participate in a program. So these children are then entered into a program. And the reason they want these children is because typically those who have been abused when they have, as children, when they have children, they'll tend to abuse their children. So it tends to run genetically. But more than well, that... I wouldn't say it's genetic. I would rather say it's behavioral. Well, whether it's behavioral or not, the behavior is already established. And here's the behavior that interests people who are interested in mind control. They have the ability to compartmentalize. So obviously many people have been sexually abused and they're not involved in government programs. To, to intensify the situation. It's just a sorry situation that they have to live with, and hopefully later on in life they can seek therapy and overcome it and forgive their parents. I'm and right and when they mind. have children, they don't, they don't abuse their children. But in this case, they seek after these people because such a person who's been abused, such a child, has the ability to compartmentalize memory. So they have the experience but they lock it away so that when they go to school and interact with the Girl Scouts or whatever, they just carry on as if it's normal. Right. And later on, this is what can be developed highly so that when they have the experience, it's so isolated and so compartmentalized, mm -hmm. they have photographic memory. Now, this is very useful for drug smuggling, for remembering bank accounts, for remembering long speeches that no one else would be entrusted to, and you know, through telegrams or Federal Express, because people who are playing high-level politics don't want to be caught. So that's some of the background of it. I'd like to interject that last month I ran a series on Arizona Wilder, who was another sex slave, and then also Bryce. I'm going to work on hers, and I actually I have lots of testimony of people that have but gotten out of the program. No, no, I know. That have said I've been subjugated to this torture and abuse. But and have been but, able to but escape. Frank, I just want to slow you down a little bit because people here are hearing this for the first time, yeah. and I want it to sink in. Caller, are you still with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm just trying to kind of bring you up to speed on a on a very vast topic that really needs a lot of study and scrutiny. And Frank has scrutinized it for so many years. You can see he's filled with enthusiasm yeah. to switch it. Yeah, I've got so, lots so of I... emails. If you look into uh, um, mindcontrol.com, I think it is. You, of course, the internet is not a reliable source of information but you've got a lot of people that are ranting and raving for pages and pages and hours and hours where does all this come from not out of the blue right. I mean it, it, their people have a sort of source of their story so a lot of these stories are totally unbelievable and yeah. shocking but I got news for you folks whenever anyone has something to say even if it may be tinged with a lot of lunacy it's coming from a space that's in their heart that has a, a frame of reference and um, okay. it's yeah, good, good. Now, uh, we didn't... Caller? Yeah. Okay. Um, I really appreciate what, where you're coming from because you sound like the typical, very good-hearted, moral individual that would never even dream of such a thing. And, it, and as a result of not being able to dream of such a thing, it, it, it takes a while to assimilate that this is actually happening. So thank you so much for calling. Don't um, forget that three hundred billion a year goes to the Pentagon Defense, and their focus is destruction, death, killing. That's their focus, and they they fine tune the art of killing and uh, and how to eliminate people. This is part of the job of the military is kill the enemy. So uh, mind control of uh, commandos and techniques of killing and using this is not uh, that far fetched an idea, and we moral people don't think like criminals, so we can't believe right. in it. But once you're a head of state, you have top secrets, you have lots of very classified stuff. And so, of course, you're going to have couriers and top secrets and people that are in and out of your life that has to deal with 
this top secret stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but do, should we have should we have the call now or should we take a roll in? Okay. Let's take this one call. Okay. You got the call. caller? Yes. Okay. How are you doing? Thanks. I, I, I am I am right on with what you're saying because you know what I grew up in foster in a foster care system now. How about that? in the mm. that gives you? And it's ridiculous. Mm. A lot of sexual abuse on the foster care system. Exactly. And now, we're, now, we're, now people that go through the foster care system that get abused by them and then have their own kids, you know what I mean? Right. And then where, are, where do they wind up 20 years down the, law, it's down the line Has trying he been to get some kind of office? Uh, 37 people died under foster care last year in New York City alone. Have you do you feel that you were subjugated to mind control experiments? Oh, yes. Yeah. They put me on it. They even put me on it. Uh, the the at the age of fourteen. Drugs, huh? Yeah, as if you needed it. And now, as now, as now, as an adult, I still, I still have pres prescription medicine, but I see a therapist, you know. But that's my own thing. How much does that cost you? Um, it's I I get it through my uh, wife's um, uh, her insurance plan, which is good. Some people aren't as lucky though, huh? They have to pay for <laughs> yeah. it. Well, yeah. it's, 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 I get I get the good stuff, whereas. If somebody was on the Medicaid, they, they would have to get the generic stuff. So it's the whole, it's, it's the whole the like, okay. hypocrisy of everything that revolves around the mighty a dollar. If you have to succeed, and if you don't, it's like it's, it's you know it's a river runs through it. You know what I'm saying? They force drugs on us that we don't want to use, and don't allow us to take drugs that we want to use. Frank, it's a vast topic. I mean, <laughs> anyway. this is like the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? Oh well, there's we, the other, we, need, we could talk we, for hours. It, it, let's it, let's see the rolling of Kathy O'Brien. You want to very much? Let's take, do that take a Thank look you, at caller. this lady, and Thank don't you. tell me if you don't think that she's a straight shooting, uh, honest person has come out of this program. This is just a, a snippet of many hours of testimony. Right on. Let's go. Thanks. Lampy, Missouri, was a place where I heard. George Bush and Bill Clinton talking, I, where, from from the point of view I had, they certainly were friends, and they didn't recognize any party lines between them. That's something for the, you know, a smoke and mirrors illusion for the public. It's not something they adhere to because they had exactly the same agenda, and that was for bringing in this new world order. I heard George Bush talking at that time. He was talking to to Bill Clinton, and, and I've since photographically recorded it and, and wrote it verbatim in our book, that when the American people became disillusioned with Republicans leading them into the New World Order, that Bill Clinton as a Democrat was going to be put into the office of president. This was decided in 1984. Actually, I'd heard about it even prior to that, but that, as of 1984, they were already discussing it as an absolute fact. It was also discussed in the groundwork for NAFTA, that by the time George Bush went into the office of president, that Salinas was going to become president of Mexico, and they together would talk be bringing in the um, NAFTA, which was the beginning of, of New World Order controls. I was forced to participate in the criminal groundwork for NAFTA, the opening of the Juarez-Mexican border to the free trade free trade of drugs, free trade of our nation's children. It's absolutely appalling the criminal roots of NAFTA. Again, this is detailed in, in the book. But it's interesting to yeah, know... Tra Transformation in America is her book, and it's amazing because you, you, when you think, as soon as Clinton got in power, he bombed Baghdad. Why he's supposed to honor? He's supposed to be a Democrat. He should honor uh, Carter's non-intervention policy and human rights policy. But no, and he continues to stay to bomb Baghdad. I think he erased some of the computer records that George and Saddam had him over the phone for many years when they pitted Iran against Iraq. So you know, within the upper echelon of government, it's all pretty much organized and. But, but the point is that the, the bright point of Kathy's work is is that we shouldn't feel helpless. Right. We she should said, feel that we can do things. Yeah, she says, you don't have to run away. You run right at them because they're because, criminals. Because, you know, Frank, here we are sitting on public access television. Yeah, God and bless public us. access television is paid for by the viewers when they sign up for cable as part of kind of, uh, you know, when this great, great uh, 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 
privilege is given to a cable operator to make millions and millions and millions of dollars, they throw back a little bit. I think in Manhattan, they get about $5 million a year, which is a very tiny percentage of the profits that the cable companies make. Every but small nevertheless, town and community has to organize yeah, and make sure they have their own public access exactly, TV show. Exactly. And, and where it comes from is, I think, work done in the 50s, uh, when the realization was that commercial messages, non-commercial messages, or messages that couldn't afford Coca-Cola type sponsoring were being threatened. And so as part of our constitutional right for free speech, we have public access. Uh, viewers, I, I can't tell you what, uh, uh, what a great thing it is in this country that at least we can talk about these things. You may agree or you may not agree if there's sex slavery in the White House, or, uh, or many other topics, but at least we can consider it and talk about it. Right. Uh, so me, indie media. Do you have the numbers org. on for calls? Indymedia.org. You can uh, tune in on channel 34, um, 8 to 10 every morning, and see the public access. First time all the public access communities are getting together, and uh, outside the convention, they had they had on uh, debates with uh, with the Green Party members and the different uh, people, even a Republican candidate, and uh, they're real honest um, uh, media. Uh, communication going on about the conventions and um, there was some sort of quote bomb scare and so they blew out their satellite and the police are chasing away the, the demonstrators and uh, unfortunately the spirit of the Libertarian Party or the Green Party or the alternative parties are what is generating the real heat there's an alignment of planets okay. and there's an awakening of consciousness and an explosion of, of awareness through and technology that people are waking up to their divinity within. That's beautiful. And to that, the divinity I, to communicate. Because that's where I want to take this, is more to the divine. Let's see what a caller has to say. Caller, can you hear me? Is someone, I, I heard that, that we had a caller. Do we have a caller? Okay, since, since there's not a caller now, I, I want to go in more, Frank. My interest in full potential of the mind is that we all know we're only using 5 or 10% of our capacity. We study, scientists study the brain and they see that this is the only organ that hasn't atrophied even though a tiny part of it is used. And so the question always is, is with this great brain capacity, why, uh, what, what's it for? And it turns out remarkable individuals throughout the ages of Jesus Christ who could walk on water, multiply loaves, turn uh, turn water into wine, uh, were able to demonstrate miracles. Can and I, I think this question? is the hope. Oh, we've got, it. we've got the caller. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I see this question across your screen about sex slavery in the White House. We're, um, one, we're wondering what your opinion is. Well, um, I, just, I, I'm wondering if this is just a metaphor for the larger issues that you're talking about. I mean, Absolutely. it seems to me that the, the, the most powerful person, uh, public person that we know about in, in the world, uh, would, in, women flock, you know, women flock to him, women attracted to him, no matter how oh, big or bad or ugly he is, you know. C caller, what, what you're saying, are you talking about Bill Clinton? Yes. Okay, what you're saying is, why would he choose a sex slave? Why would he need a sex okay, slave? Okay, you're absolutely right. If you read the book, you find out he doesn't. He's actually, the book, according to the book, he, um, he's got other problems, okay? He's okay, bisexual. I have a question also so, about he, also but I think, I think Frank on his show was taking the parts of Kathy O'Brien's, um, what, what is it, dep not deposition? Uh, it, testimony. Testimony. What and actually a, a big abuser for her was, uh, was Dick Cheney. Yes. So Dick I, don't know, Cheney, I don't know how he does at the cocktail parties. But he would brutalize her in, the ba in his private yeah. bathroom and have a lot of violent sex with her. Dick Cheney is very vicious in private, with, we used to be. And also Senator Byrd, another old-time geezer of our government. It's been in office for over 30 years who abused uh, Kathy O'Brien. And he was the head of the Arms Appropriation Committee. He held the purse springs of the government. So he has all the real nasty secrets. And the, these old men are, unfortunately, according to, to, to Kathy, I can't say for certain, but I do know Kathy. I've met her a few times. I believe her story. And she swears up and down that she was physically abused and tortured by these characters, plus others. But, Paul, but Caller, I really, I really hear what you're saying. It, 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 at first, it kind of defies common sense. But, but it's as you pursue it more, you begin to see there is rhyme and reason. My interest in politics wasn't so much the bizarreness of sex slavery or, or, or even that interest, but some of the politicians, the way they're voting and the cost of what this is to the taxpayers, like $20 billion worth of bombs felt on Serbia, fell on Serbia, and most of the American public hardly knows 
how it how it happened. What, what, is, no, oh, oh yeah, where, going on. Where, where, just where every it day is. we bomb Iraq on and a regular basis. It, it, I mean, we could we could go on and on, but but I think the most important thing to me is to try to look for the positive and to try to nurture the positive because I believe it is there. After all, Kathy O'Brien's book is the best-selling privately published book. Transformation in America. And, and you'll see at the end of the show, to get your pen and papers to, uh, to get the P.O. box and the telephone or the, um, the yeah, address you, where you, you can order the book. You just send a $15 book. check. You'll get your book. Okay, yeah. I have a very Barnes & Noble doesn't have it. Uh, okay. Kathy mentioned in the videotape that uh, it was predestined, it was just chosen that Clinton would be elected or be the president in ninth, as far back as 1984. I had heard it was uh, done in 1991 at a Bilderberger meeting. Both, um, both uh, Clinton and Bush belonged to this secret organization right. called the Bilderbergers. What do you know about them? Well, I, but, no, I really, really appreciate your call. I think all of those are kind of details. I think in general the public knows when they hear the Democrats speak and the Republicans speak at the convention, they just feel that there's really not that much news. And the way their, their jobs are going and their lifestyles going, you know, it can be shown that people work harder, have less leisure time, and, uh, and really accomplish less in spite of all these labor-saving devices. Yeah, they talk about a booming economy, but it's the phenomenal technological revolution, the Internet, Wall Street being taught in the high schools. And uh, unfortunately, you know, what are the issues? The issues are penal code reform, uh, medical marijuana, uh, the homelessness, things like that. Clinton is happy to say I slashed the welfare budget. He cut it in half. You know, excuse me. The, they're both the, the bipartisan politi politicians are just snowballing us into thinking that I'm better than he's than that party. But the real mm -hmm. issues are raised by Ralph Nader or John Hagelin or even Pat Buchanan. They are they are outsiders. John Hagelin. John Hagelin of the Natural Law Party. Oh, he was well, a TM guy. Huh? Yeah, he's a so he's meditation he's right. doctor. He's written. We say meditation. There you are again. I mean. You know, I, this is a huge topic. I'm even thinking of making a whole weekly show on it. Obviously, sex slavery is sort of flashy; it catches attention, but ultimately, no, what you want to do? Mind, my sex slave is just part of it. it's mind control, mind control of the masses yeah. and the media. Frank, we got to wrap it up. Oh well, Listen, well you've yes. been off the end. <laughs> thank you. It's a good show. Yeah, thank you, and let's thank let's you. do more. Call in if you have the number and tell us what you think about this uh, for the future. Thank you for joining us. This is Paula Gloria with the Whole Tooth. And just like teeth are related to all parts of the body, if there's anything like sex slavery going on, I think it's because there's something askew in, in all parts of our society, which I think we can rectify. So thank you for joining us. And Frank, thank you so much. So here we are back again. And I want to say that I'm going to be having my, well, let me see if I got this volume up enough. Um, I'm going to be having my new show in the mornings. And I'm going to try to draw together all of the important topics. I want to just wrap up before I take the calls that shortly after that, you can see that was about one year and one month before 9-11. When 9-11 happened, I was in an ashram in the south of India. That was the first I heard of it. And uh, it was very interesting because I was told by a master, a manifesting master, he could do the miracles and some astonishing miracles. And I'm hoping that uh, that's what, what I really long to, to exchange knowledge on because it is an extraordinarily exciting time in which we're alive. And the caller I had before that was offended about my position on impeachment, I want to say that was also the caller because I remember his voice that was saying everything's corrupt. But there is a way out. Kathy O'Brien, at the time that I met her, I was a little hesitant. I, I didn't meet her. The time that I... Uh, you know, encountered her work and heard about her, I heard she was a very devout Christian. And I was very interested in Eastern things. I, I always have been, but I've also, as that caller before noted, I take very seriously all the phenomenon in my culture and tradition, which is Christianity. So I felt that if I met her directly, she might think that I was studying Hinduism or something. and being that she'd been through so much trauma, I didn't think that it would be so um, such a good time to meet. But when I went to India and I would encounter masters who said that they could help to change the world, I was always in the back of my mind thinking that uh, these are the people who I want to help, the people who have been very, very abused. And uh, again, 
even if we don't agree on certain things, I had no judgment towards President Bush. I was just making a commentary on the, the State of the Union. Uh, like one caller said before, the sex slavery can be like a metaphor, a metaphor for the, uh, the mind control that we're all part of to the point that it's hard because of our concern about image and looking right and being right and having the right clothes and going to the right places. We're shy to say what's really on our minds and share with other people because we think, oh, how, how are we going to be viewed? Uh, Frank Craven oftentimes has been considered crazy because he was so aligned with these dismal topics. But I remember when I brought one master to, to New York and I had different people lined up to meet him, the social contributors, because people who have great gifts, who have the capacity to do miracles, have an awareness that they wouldn't be given these gifts if, uh, if they didn't share them. So I tried to line up all the social contributors I knew. And I remember this one master really paid attention to Frank. He really, uh, he really took note. And uh, as one master told me, um, very great people at one time or another are considered crazy because their vision is out of sync with the rest of society. Uh, Webster Tarpley is one man that's definitely held the flame for 9-11 truth and his book 9-11 Synthetic Terror Made in USA is, is a, a beautiful book even for the writing, just for the writing alone. The way he turns a phrase, his elegance, his refinement, his, his education, uh, it's, it's well worth reading. And then, of course, on the level of information, I would highly encourage the caller who called before to, to read good information, to get a hold of good information. You're not going to find it on Fox News because there's vested interests. So uh, again, that was a show that was done in, uh, in August of 2000. It was very traumatic for me at the time. Even though the callers were not nearly as challenging as some of the callers I've had here. Well, let's see if I've got one now. Hello, caller. Hi, hi, Paul. It's oh, Rusty. Oh, great, Rusty. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too. When I go too. morning edition. Uh, I, how am I going to talk to you now? I, I don't okay. know what Okay, are you on the internet, Rusty? Yeah. You do the internet? Okay, you got a pen and pencil? Write down rabbit hole central yeah. at, at earthlink.net. Okay? Because <laughs> oh, I love you. Okay, thanks a lot, Rusty. And stay in touch. Okay? I'm so sad, though, that your show's leaving. I feel like I've been. No, it's not afraid. leaving. I'm going, I'm going big time. I'm getting a daily show. So oh, watch so me in the morning. So brave. Thanks. Thanks, Rusty. Okay. So um, we're, we're getting towards the end here. I wanted to show a little bit of Webster Tarpley. So let me cruise you on over here. I was able, to, I had the good fortune to bring him to my house, and he talked about 9-11 Truth, and there's going to be a 9-11 Truth meeting in um, Los Angeles that perhaps I'll be going to and announcing this show. So let's get this one more caller. Um, hello, caller? Okay, we lost it. So let's go on with Webster here. July 7th, 2005 in London. This was essentially all of the main facts on how this was state-sponsored terrorism were available on the internet in about three days, right? It had been prepared by three exercises, Atlantic Blue of the British, Top Off 3 of the US, Triple Play of Canada, and then you had Peter Power of Visor Associates who said, oh my God, we were drilling bombs in those stations more or less at the same time. What could this be? Well, that's obviously how it was done. And I think now we have a much better understanding of how terrorism does not come from a cave in Afghanistan, does not come from Hezbollah or Iran, but it comes through drills, exercises, right? Um, Mongoose, Operation Mongoose was supposed to be the killing of Castro, turned out to be the killing of Kennedy. I found in my study of the Hinckley attempt to kill Reagan, I found that uh, Hinckley's brother had been meeting with Neil Bush, which is an interesting fact, but I also found that there, had, there was a presidential succession exercise going on, nine lives. So that was another one. Um, so what was the, I mean, did, 
uh, Reagan and acted differently. Uh, Get rid of Reagan and uh, it was Bush. Bush then assumed the presidency, even as it was, because Reagan was knocked out for so long that Bush. Bush took over the presidency. The presidency was then run by Bush for the covert side, and then uh, Bush's friend Baker and Deaver gravitated towards Bush. And that was it. And then Reagan was simply a figurehead. So didn't, didn't it basically work for desperate men? Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't the whole plan actually work because of all the billions and billions and billions of dollars that were built from the United States coffers? To, into the war, industrial military complex. Didn't they make their money now? Are they done? No, because I, th I think money is the wrong, absolutely wrong way to look at it. The issue is world domination, and the key to world domination is the dollar. One of the underpinnings of the dollar is oil, but we should not exaggerate the question of oil, because other raw materials can be equally decisive mm. at different times. And it's world domination. It's U.S., British. It's what you see. Mm -hmm. U.S. British world domination, mm -hmm. with Israel perhaps added as a as a appendix to that, something like right. that. So, so this shift into euros, investment into euros, is is, is undermining that plan. Sure. Yes, I mean we have to we have to also agree that the predicament of the Anglo-American finance oligarchs is insoluble. There's no hope for them. Mm -hmm. The only question is they can with their various expedients they'll drag down the world, they'll destroy the world. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that could put them out of business? and neutralize them in any useful time. Again, you know, the only thing I can think of is the greatest scandal of the age, 9-11 Truth, September Gate. Call what, it what you will. What do you say, Harold? Let's hear from Harold. Maybe we'll hear first. Oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. Sure. No, I, I, I just wanted to comment on the unfortunate skepticism of the public, though. So say that, in other words, it is proven that, we're, that what many of us assumed all along, that this thing was politically motivated from the inside, and we prove it by the thermite and everything, okay? And we, you know, it comes out that, say, bin Laden actually never left the CIA and is a part of this whole thing, whatever. Whatever is proven, how do we get this skeptical public to believe, you know, to, to believe the true version of it. When this is a difficult thing, because no matter what truth is put in front of them, they want to believe that the government is still legitimate and the government wouldn't do that to us and blah, blah, blah. So how, what's your take on that? I think you're too pessimistic. I think <laughs> generally the, um, these, uh, these attitudes, uh, this is what we find in ourselves. This is the fruit of our isolation and atomization. But in these rare moments, Along comes Jimmy Walter, right, the great political philanthropist, and he gets Zogby two years ago.